Hi everybody, welcome back for another English lesson. Today our focus is going to be on analyzing um, some more advertisements. We're focusing on uh, humor and emotion. We're also going to be touching a little bit on repetition, which I did forget to put in here. We're going to be focusing on it a little bit on repetition as well. And yeah, so today, give me one moment, understand why. Okay, so our learning intentions and our success criteria today. This is our roadmap for the lesson as we look on as to what's happening. This is going to be something for us to flick back to, to keep track of and to make sure that we're staying on track. So learning intentions. By the end of the lesson, I can, you can, hopefully, analyze emotions in advertisements. We're going to look at how some advertisements try and tap into our emotions and make us feel things. Analyze humor in advertisements. We're going to look at how some jokes try and use humor, make us laugh to choose their products. Understand why repetition works in advertisements. And we're going to practice writing persuasively. So, we're going to do this our success criteria. We're going to do a quick analysis of, the, um, of an IKEA video. We're going to be analyzing some humorous videos. We're looking at a writing scaffold, and I've got a bit of a writing task for you guys to do after the um, recorded lesson. So, first, our IKEA lamp video. You guys can find this in the link above. I'm not going to do a small URL. Hopefully you guys can hear the... Um, music that's coming through with this video. It's not muted, no? Got sad piano music happening in the background. Old lamp looking inside at the new lamp. Old lamp outside in the rain, looking at the new owner, enjoying the new lamp. And the light turns off. So just in case you guys didn't hear what he essentially said, and I might not get the wording exactly the same, is many of you feel bad for the old lamp. It, um, that is because you are crazy. It has no feelings. Plus, the new one is better. So the focus here is that a lot of adver advertisers and a lot of companies will try and make it look like they care about us. They'll try and make it make us feel like we are a part of their company. They try and make a small bond happen between the audience and between the company itself. So when you're looking at different um, products that are being advertised to you, try and be a little bit careful that the companies haven't tried and made you feel like you're part of the club. We can see this with a lot of the companies um, during the coronavirus uh, scare that the world's going through. A lot of companies are showing that, you know, Coca-Cola cares about you. Hungry Jacks cares about you. Realistically, they're focused on themselves and their own company's growth. So while we're looking at different advertisers, we need to focus on, is the product good for us or is it a waste of money? If the new lamp is working, sorry, if the old lamp is working, do we really need a new lamp or are we being persuaded to buy a new one? We're going to have a quick look at this video, which is both humorous and does touch on some emotions that we're going to have a look at in a moment. Defense. Attackers burst burn the defense. 
So hopefully uh, none of you guys throw a tantrum like that. So this is an uh, ad for a, um, like a medicine. Uh, if you're starting to feel sick, you take this and then it's meant to make you feel a bit better. Um, and what their focus is on, they're, they're using humor as well as using something that, so their target audience, when we're remembering our audience, is obviously parents, people that are, are older, not young people. And what they're focusing on is how we might have different problems. And one of the problems that a lot of parents have is when their children have a bit of a, throw a bit of a tantrum at the shops. So they're trying to tap into the emotion of, we know how you feel as a parent. We get you, we understand you. Come and buy our product because we know what you're going through. We're here to make you feel better. I don't need the whiteboard just now. I need this one. <laughs> so a lot of advertisers will use emotion and emotional language to, to, there we go, to help you look at buying their product. So how does this affect us when we're writing? Emotion can be used to persuade people. If you're part of that target audience, you're very likely to be persuaded. When we are try trying to persuade people, we can use emotive language to make our point stand out. I'm gonna move this to a new page. I'd like it if you guys could write this down just so that you have a copy of it somewhere. So when we're talking about what emotive language, love, hate, excited, bored, we're showing people how we feel. How did you feel when you used this new product? To be honest, I was really bored. Netflix didn't have anything new that I that I was wanting to watch. Everything on there was so, was so last year and I've seen everything that's good to watch on Netflix. How did you feel with Disney Plus? I was so excited. I loved watching all of the old movies that I haven't seen in many, many years. And what about Stan? Stan had some shows that I hated. I couldn't be bothered watching them. When we're looking at how we can use emotions um, in our own text, we're using our emotive language. We might That might not be exactly how we feel, but we might not necessarily be bored with Netflix, but we're trying to show the, the reader a little bit, we're not just saying it was okay. We are moving away from the idea that it is okay. Or just all right. When we say that something is okay, it's all right, it's decent. We're not really persuading people one way or the other. We're not saying them, yes, you should try this or no, you shouldn't. We're showing that it's a really middle ground, that we don't care one way or the other. And if we don't care, then we're not being very persuasive. So we need to make sure that we're, we're using emotive language when we're being persuasive. If we're telling someone that we're feeling sick and we can't come into work today, I'm feeling horrible today. Not, I'm okay. I'm not coming in today, but I'm okay. Because that's not really persuasive language. Hi boss, I'm really sorry I can't come into work today. I'm feeling horribly sick. My stomach is really sore. I think I ate something that was bad yesterday. And if I come in, I'm worried that I might vomit everywhere. Again, in calling someone and telling them that we're sick, we will be explaining ourselves and we might use some emotive language to show the emotions that we're going through. But we're not just going to say, I'm okay. Because the response then is, well, why can't you come into work if you're just okay? Now we're going to have a look at analyzing humor. So we looked at one video of the mum throwing a bit of a tantrum and everyone looking on in horror. 
By the way, I love this look the mum's like, we good now? <laughs> so we got an M&M's commercial. In case you guys can't hear the video, they're looking for the snacks and they're saying, where are the snacks? The snacks, they're gone, they're gone. So while this isn't a very over the top, ha ha, ah, it's not finished. So while this isn't um, an extremely over the top, ha ha video, first we've got the funny part of the M&Ms moving around, locking themselves in the bathroom. When you think of M&Ms, they're not just another boring chocolate, they're not just regular Cadbury dairy milk, they're M&Ms, they're fun. Remember, they locked themselves in the airplane bathroom. When it comes over here, the old man's knocking on the door. There's a bit of a line happening. What does the M&M say? <laughs> You're going to have to hold it. And we have the ladies looking fearfully, trying to find where all the snacks are for all of their, um, for all of the uh, people on the flight. Okay, so I'm going to pause this and fill you guys in on the details just in case you can't hear what's taking place. So first, the, um, the restaurant owner comes in with a, an eel and he shows it to the guy and he's a bit like, uh, I don't want to eat this. Then it comes out to the man bringing the eel out to him. And the gentleman saying, yep, now everyone can eat. Then... The voiceover comes comes in explaining that different cultures look at things in different ways. In English culture, it's rude if you don't eat everything that's on your plate. Whereas in Chinese culture, which is the other gentleman, if you eat everything that's on your plate, that means that you're saying that your host isn't generous enough. So what this ad is trying to use is that the eels are getting bigger and bigger. It's funny. The ad's also trying to make us feel like they understand us, that they're connected to us. HSBC, I think it was. The bank. They're trying to show us that we understand you. Everyone's different. We understand all the different nationalities. We know things. We get you. Come and deal with us because we understand you. When a lot of companies use these persuasive techniques, we need to understand that it's their job to try and change our mind, to try and persuade us. So I'm going to cross these two off. And now we're going to move on to repetition. Um, I don't have an ad loaded up because I just remember this one. Save, 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 ad. No, okay. I'm not going to look for it because it might it'll interrupt the flow of the lesson a little bit. So it's like those advert, um, ads on TV. And I haven't seen them for a little while, but they're bound to make a comeback soon. Save, save, save. Come in to domain for a big sale. Or um, when the ads constantly repeat certain things, they make things stick in our mind. What do we associate with this company? The things that they constantly repeat to us. If we go to this place, what are we going to do? We're going to save, save, save. Um, what, so I randomly get stuff stuck in my head. And one of the things that always that gets stuck in my head is from an ad. Save up to 40%, but only for 40 hours. I think that was some bed company, Mr. Snooze or something. So different companies repeat different things and different phrases to help things get stuck in our head. Now, 
We're going to cross that out. Why are we focusing on all of these different things? Why are we focusing on all of the, all of the different ways that we can persuade people? This term, we're focusing on using persuasive language. We're focusing on using all of the different things that we can to persuade people, to change people's minds, to make people think similar things to what we're thinking. So we're going to look at, I literally just pulled two topics out of the air. So we're going to focus on our ability to explain. When we're explaining something, we need to remember, it's not just enough to say that this is it and I'm right because I said I'm right. You know, remember, it's what are we having for dinner? What do you guys want for dinner? Pizza. Okay, why? You need to explain to me why. It's not enough just to say something. You need to sell it to me. You need to tell me why. So I picked two topics, two topics that are a bit difficult to explain. So hopefully if I show you what I mean here, then we can get a bit better with explaining in some other areas. So our first topic, our first sentence, our first statement, birds can fly. Why? Prove it. I don't believe that birds can fly. Make me believe it. We know that birds can fly because they have wings. Full stop. Airplanes can fly and they have had their wings developed sorry and they have developed their wings based on the way that bird wings help the bird to fly. <laughs> so this is the best sentence because it is a bit of a, a weird topic for me to have picked and I should have picked an easier one for myself but it is what it is. Further, we know that birds can fly because when we are walking, we can often look up and see them in the air. Even when they are not flying, we can see nests in really high places. And birds cannot climb very high places. So, comma, to reach their nests, birds must fly to get there. So I didn't just say birds can fly and you know that. I did my best to explain it. Next we've got rubbish belongs in a bin. Here's hoping that um, all of you guys at home do actually put your rubbish in a bin. I'm going to give myself a little bit more room so I don't block myself off with my camera on the side. Rubbish belongs in a bin. Rubbish belongs in a bin because we need to keep our environment clean. Full stop. If we throw rubbish everywhere, it can fly around when the wind catches it, full stop. If plastic sits in the dirt and rain and is then blown by Sorry, I'm going to move that down and is blown by the wind, comma, it can 
make the people or the things it touches dirty. Full stop. Unclean animals might come and try to eat some of the rubbish. Full stop. If we throw our food scraps on the floor, we might find a lot of cockroaches and mice around. They will be attracted to the food and try to hang around the dirty areas. Full stop. Why else is it important for us to throw our rubbish in the bin? We need to take care of our environment. If we throw rubbish on the floor, we can pollute waterways if the rubbish makes its way down the gutter. Animals might try to eat, did I write eat or cat? Eat, yep, eat the rubbish and get sick. So here I haven't just said, throw your rubbish in the bin or else, I've tried my best to explain it, to tell people why it's important for them to throw their rubbish in the bin. So, we're going to practice right we're going to practice writing persuasively ourselves. I'm going to give you guys some writing prompts. These are some things that you guys might not need right now. They might not apply to you right now, but they will eventually. So, work. These are your writing prompts. One. You are feeling sick and cannot make it in to work today. Full stop. Write a small paragraph explaining to your boss why you cannot come in to work. So you can do this as a phone call or as a text message or as an email. I want you to make sure that you write persuasively. You must explain yourself. Use full sentences and capital letters. I want you to do your best job at explaining this and not just saying, I'm sick, I'm not coming in. Because if you try that with a boss, sometimes they might not be too happy and you might get fired. So we're practicing our skills so that when we do go to work, we're ready. Two, you are allergic to something or you cannot, missed the letter there, or you cannot eat or do not want to eat something explain to your friend why you cannot eat that food. 
So again, it's not just, I don't want your stinking pizza. You're going to explain yourself. I can't eat this pizza because I'm allergic to the cheese. I don't want to eat this burger because I really don't like mayonnaise. I'm not a big fan of white sauces. You're going to write a small paragraph explaining it. Again, we're writing persuasively. You are explaining yourself. You're using full sentences and capital letters. I've got a little bit of an extension task in the uh, coming up for the English um, bit of work. It's something a little bit more fun and a little bit creative. Once you've completed these two, I want you to have a look at the English task that I've left up that I've put up for you guys. So, if you have any issues with any of the work that we've done today, make sure that you write this in your workbooks, that you write down your questions and your answers. Make sure that everything's clear and you're doing your best job with your work. If you get stuck on anything, please email me or your other classroom teachers or contact us on the Google Classroom. If you need help with anything, let us know. If everything's going smoothly, have a great day and we'll see you next time.